What's up guys, I'm here at The Hustler. I'm trying something different because I've never seen a poker vlogger play Limit Hold'em. So I'm gonna play the 2550 Limit game here. I played this game a few times in the past, several years ago, but this is my first time back here at The Hustler in a while. So we're gonna give it a try. It's gonna be really hard to construct every betting round with so much action going on. So it'll be a challenge, but I'm up for it. Check this out guys, I got a, oops, I got a media kit here. I'm gonna show you guys. Cool, nice. I already know what most of you are thinking. Why on earth are we doing a Limit Hold'em session? If you don't like Limit Hold'em, it's probably because you simply don't understand Limit Hold'em. And I think the main reason why a lot of people don't like Limit Hold'em is because they're comparing it to No Limit Hold'em, and these two games are just not comparable. They are completely different games. It's like comparing Omaha to Hold'em or Seven Card Stud to Omaha. The strategies are different and how you approach this game is different so just hear me out i like limit hold'em for a couple of reasons number one it has a ton of action your chips are in play a lot more frequently than it is in no limit hold'em it doesn't have that all-in moment like in no limit hold'em but your chips are in play you're gonna see more turn cards you're gonna see more rivers and more showdowns and the pots are always big in limit hold'em now another key reason why i think a lot of people should learn Limit Hold'em is because this game is soft. The game has not gotten tougher over the last 10 or 15 years. Comparing it to No Limit Hold'em, that game has gone really tough because there's a ton of training material out there, but in Limit Hold'em, not so much. Limit Hold'em is a value-driven game and it uses more of a mathematical approach. In this session, I'm playing 25-50, which means that the small bet is 25 and the big bet is 50. Pre-flop and flop, we're betting in increments of 25, and on the turn in the river, we're betting in increments of 50. One more thing I want to point out is that the abbreviations we use in Limit Hold'em is a little bit different. Capital SB stands for small bet, capital BB stands for big bet, lowercase sb is small blind, and lowercase bb stands for big blind. So let's play a hand. Remember, the blinds are 15-25, so there's going to be 40 in the pot to start. I'm going to 2-bet with my 10-9 suited, under the gun plus 1 to 50. The hijack is going to call 50. Everyone, including the blinds, are going to fold, so it's heads up to the flop. I end up flopping bottom 2, and I'm happy to see an ace because he's going to have a lot of aces in his pre-flop calling range. So I bet 25. He's going to make it 2 bets to 50, I'm going to 3 bet it to 75, and he's surprisingly 4 bets to 100. In Limit Hold'em, the betting is capped at 4 or 5 bets per street depending on where you're at. Here it's 4 bets, but when you're heads up, there's no limit to how many times you can re-raise. I could 5 bet here to 125, but I'm going to just call because if I check raise on the turn when the bet increases to 50, I can make an extra $25 off of him. I actually turn a full house here too, which is pretty sick. So I check as planned. He puts out a bet of 50. I'm going to check raise it to 100. Now he three bets me again to 150. And now I do have some legit concerns that he could have ace 10 here. So I just call and check the river. He bets 50. I call. And he has jack 9 offsuit. Huh? Good. A full house. I think it's going to be a good day. Just rewind to the beginning of this video when I said that these games are usually softer than No Limit games. I'll show you before you go. Here the cutoff decides to limp for 25, which is not recommended. In Limit Hold'em you want to be aggressive and try to steal the blinds because it means a lot more in Limit Hold'em than it does in No Limit. I call, I'm priced in, the big blind raises, and both the cutoff and myself call. I'm getting 5 to 1 odds to see a flop, and I do, and I flop trips. So I check, the big blind bets again, the cutoff folds. I'm going to only call here because, again, if I can check raise the turn where the betting increment increases to 50, I make an extra $25. The queen comes on the turn, I check as planned, he bets another 50 as 
as predicted and here I am reaching for chips to put in the big check raise. He's going to call the 100 and we're going to see a river card which comes a 9 of clubs. Not the best river card but my hand is too strong and again this game it's really important to get max value so I bet the river. Unfortunately he raises, I have to call here and he turns over ace queen, he had top pair top kicker with the net flush draw and got there on the river. Both players play this hand well I think. On to the next hand, under the gun limps. There were a few limpers in this game and again limping in limit hold'em is a terrible idea. Many people don't like limit hold'em because they think that there are too many multi-way pots and that people don't fold, but it's probably because you're not 3-bet isolating enough and instead you're just inviting them to see flops. So on the buy-in with Jack-8, I'm going to raise this, I'm going to try to isolate out the blinds to get heads up. It doesn't work though, they both call, we're going to see a 4-way flop. And even though my isolation raise didn't work pre-flop, it's okay because I have position. So here, everyone's going to check the flop. Now I could have put in a continuation raise here, but against three opponents, I don't recommend it. But if I did and got raised, it's an easy call with a backdoor and two overs. I check though and we turn top pair, uh, small blind puts in a bet of 50. I'm going to 100% put in a raise here for value. Again, it's really important to get max value and limit hold'em. He calls and the river is a nine of diamonds. Um, I'm gonna put in another value bet and he calls and I show my hand and he bucks. So again, I just want to emphasize the fact that aggression really pays off in limit hold'em. You wanna ISO three bet as much as possible. Almost if you're gonna play the hand, you should be raising. So here the under the gun player raises two bets to 50. I'm gonna three bet from the low jack with ace jack offsuit. Even if I don't have the best hand against the under the guns opening range, by three bet isolating, I'm most likely to gonna get everyone else behind me to fold, which means I'm gonna have the button and position for the rest of this hand, which is huge. And the fact that I now have position in the heads up pot makes up for the times when my hand is worse than his opening range. So that's going to bring us to the most exciting hand of the night. I have pocket nines, under the gun plus one, the under the gun player already raises to 50 so I 3 bet it to 75 and we're going to be heads up. Notice that most of the pots that I've played have been heads up and that's because I'm 3 bet isolating out all the players behind me and that is crucial in limit hold'em. Otherwise, you're going to end up in multi-way pots and it's going to be hard to control. Alright, so we're going to see a flop. It's King King Jack. It's two over cards to my nine, which isn't great, but because there's two kings out there, it's less likely that she hit the flop. So I put in a continuation bet and she calls. After she calls the bet on the flop, I'm planning to shut down on the turn because the only thing I'm really beating is a flush draw or a straight draw, but it's not likely that she has a straight draw given that I block it with two nines. But then this happens, I make a full house on the turn with the nine of clubs, so she checks, I bet she calls. It's starting to feel like she has a jack, or hopefully slow playing a king. The river is a seven of diamonds, she checks again and I bet 50. And now she finally puts in a raise to 100. I'm thinking awesome, she slow played ace king or king queen, and I'm gonna three bet it. Now she four bets me, and now I have legit concerns about king jack or pocket jacks. So I make a crying call here, and she has quads, just quads, on the flop. You got the jackpot. One more nine and the jackpot. Yeah, jackpot. Yeah, that's jackpot. Sick. That's sick. That's sick. I'm sorry, sweetheart. Alright, let's do one more hand, because I got pocket aces here. I'm going to raise it from the cutoff. The button is going to just call, and then the big blind is going to 3-bet, which allows me now to 4-bet, which is awesome. They both call the four bets and we go to a flop three way. The big blind's going to check. I'm going to put in a bet on the flop and both of them are just going to call. Now in limit hold'em, when you flop a flush draw, when you're multi-way, usually you're going to play it aggressively, put in a raise, build up the pot so that when you hit your draw, you're getting paid out in a big pot. But they both call, plus I'm holding the ace of diamonds, so it's unlikely that they have flush draws. I'm thinking they probably have king x hands. The turn is a great card because now it's way less likely that they have pocket 7s. Um, I don't see a lot of 7x hands in the big blinds 3 betting range or the buttons calling range, so I'm really liking my hand right now. I get a bet in, they both call again. The river is a safe 10. 
uh, the big blind checks again. I bet 50, and and they both call. It's pretty unusual to see an overcall just like in No Limit, but again, I think they both had like maybe King Queen or King Jack type hands here. So I show my aces, and they both muck, and it's a pretty nice pot. I got some of my money back, and I'm going to wrap up this session. <laughs> All right, I am leaving the Hustler. I booked a small win. The last hour or so was really rocky up and down. I recovered from the uh, full house versus quads hand. All right, I just wrapped up a 40-80 limit hold'em session at the Commerce, up about 11.50 or so in about four hours of play. Um, I was up a little bit more, but limit hold'em swingy, so. Um, I, I did not vlog this one because I was doing some editing from the Hustler session and man, it is a lot of work. So I didn't, I decided not to, but I kind of wish I did because I got a couple bluffs through today and also was able to get a couple of check races on the river in as well. So educationally wise, it, it would have been a good one, but uh, oh well.